Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I accidentally, when I lost, hit spacebar and thus started another Eden run. You know what, why don't we go with that Eden run? Because I just quit it to start this. It's not like it's preceded or anything. Um... But it's gonna look like it because we have uh, Goathead and Book of Shadows, which is a great start. G6JK3JSF. Let's get hurt on the way in. And yeah, okay, this is gonna be. This is gonna look suspicious. <laughs> it's like the only time in my life I've ever wished for kind of like a shitty Eden start so it didn't look like I was pulling the wool over your eyes. But hey, uh, it is what it is. This is Ceremonial Robes, Book of Shadows. And Goathead to start with. That's uh, obviously an incredibly good start. Mind you, we had an incredibly good start last time, and we lost. I'm not going to take a ton of ownership over that, because we had literally the nightmare scenario. What's the nightmare scenario, NL? I didn't see the episode. Did you uh, re-roll your awesome run into uh, like a re-roll room with uh, Isaac's heart in it or something? Uh, I'm happy you asked in those very specific contexts, because you are 100% absolutely correct. Um, we re-rolled our half-decent run. It wasn't that amazing, but it was pretty good. We re-rolled it into Isaac's Heart. And not like Isaac's Heart amazing, like Isaac's Heart okay. But I still think, uh, probably a better player than myself, or even myself, but in a, in a little bit more of a determined mindset, probably could have had a better chance of knocking that one out. But, shit happens. So, you know, here we are. I at least have a convenient excuse for that episode being a loss, but, you know, I don't like putting up two losses in a row. That's not the kind of, uh, Rebirth player I aspire to be. Uh, a little, uh, overkill on the Champions here game. You know, I, I realize that we're on hard mode, but you could, you could, uh, cut down on the number of Champions a freaking little bit, I think, here. This is, this is a little bit of an assortment of a Motley crew, if you will, a Vince Neil, a Tommy Lee. Yo, how sweet would it be if Motley Crue's drummer wasn't Tommy Lee? Wait for it. It was Tommy Lee Jones. Think about it. Give it a roll that around. Rattle it around in your brain a little bit. Ooh, Capricorn. Yeah, there's no way people are going to believe that this one is not preceded now. Um, and then let me know how you feel about it. Because, you know, if I ever invent a time machine, oh, kill Hitler, oh, win the lottery, oh, sports almanac from 1985. Nah, dog. It's all about changing the life path of Tommy Lee Jones and Tommy Lee slightly. So that, um, you know, Tommy Lee is the one who ends up being Agent J, or sorry, Agent K in um, Men in Black, and also being the pivotal role in, in The Fugitive. And um, Tommy Lee Jones is the one that is the drummer for Motley Crue, you know, has the reality show, and also has the public sex tape with Pamela Anderson, where people marvel at the size of his uh, enormous phallus. It's an XL floor, isn't it? It is an XL floor. It is an XL floor. Let's, uh, let's be honest, that's really good. <laughs> that's exceptionally awesome for us. Because that means a shorter ticket to get to our deal with the devil, or a shorter wait. Um, we, did, we spend one less key, not that that's really that big of a deal, but we can get something good out of our shop here. And I can be a little bit lazier with our damage, although I probably should not be. I am going to take Red Candle. One thing I've realized in this business is, um, you either get busy living or you get busy dying, and, uh... I think I've been a little bit of a slave to the absurdity, and as a result, I have cost myself uh, a couple of runs that I could have won. I love the absurdity, but I think in this case, you got to just take a step back and be like, you know what, let's knock this run out of the fucking park, and then we can come back later and be like, oh, fancy free, it's a circus here, you know? I wanted to just go to our, uh, our item room before going to our uh, deal with the devil so that I can just leave once I do our deal with the devil, you know? And it sucks anyway, so we could just leave right now if we want. But first, obviously, we gotta do our deal with the devil and uh, various related shenanigans up here. And I'm excited, I really feel like this run has some great things coming. The haunts, not a problem. We'll just throw down some fire and then throw it down early so we can hopefully get them to walk into it. I'd rather not shoot because the knockback could uh, cause some small problems. There we go. And we'll just try to sink this one right there. Yeah, it's pretty good. Get you to walk through it again. I don't really want to shoot because it could cause a small amount of uh, turbulence here. Safety pin's okay. And then we got pin. Again, it's, it's pretty much perfect. Just try to throw that up in a convenient location. And he will be dead. HP for us, which we might not have wanted to take just yet. Doesn't really matter. We can, we can afford to take two of these. 
Um, let's take Demon Baby, and I actually value Missing Page 2 more than Ghost Baby, which is sad for Ghost Baby, but hey, such is life, man. All right, we're on the Caves 1, four and a half minutes into the run. Pretty great uh, tier damage, but uh, it's going to be dwarfed a little bit by, by our Red Candle for now. But the Red Candle is basically, it exists to make our life easy until um, our tiers are so good that we don't have to worry about it anymore. And I, I think that we will probably reach that point, considering unlike our last round, we actually have deal with the devil precedent early, as opposed to that janky-ass deal with the angel that never really worked out for us. Those are not red chests, so I'm, I'm not super tempted to go for them. Health upgrade is great, actually. If we can get some red hearts, I would much rather at this stage in the game pay one red heart uh, for a deal with the devil than three spirit hearts. It makes it a lot easier to, to take a deal early and still have the survivability necessary to, well, survive. That was probably some of the worst line delivery I could have done there, but, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not an actor. You always think that acting is going to be easy. And then you read from a script and you're like, Hello, everybody! Oh, this is my natural speaking voice. I'm Chip Diggler. I, uh... Flunked out of J school, and all of a sudden, I found myself doing the sports show for a local community college. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, it's good to have that kind of coverage. It's, it's a dream job for some people. You find your passion. But uh, you know, I, I I don't like uh, I don't like the way my voice sounds when I read from a script most of the time. I think I have a, a somewhat idiosyncratic way of speaking. And I find that hard to emulate uh, on the fly. Yes, I find it hard to do an impression of myself. I know you're saying Northern Lion, master of impressions. Indistinguishable from the great Sir Michael Caine, Kevin Spacey. John Malkovich as Teddy KGB from Rounders. It's true. Sometimes I find myself, shall we say, inimitable. Even though I'm doing a pretty good job of playing a caricature, a caricature of myself right now. Right down to the stuttering. Why not get 9 volt, right? Donation machine's doing fine. It doesn't have to be a 9.99 for afterbirth, I hope. <laughs> we might put more of a uh, more emphasis on getting to that for afterbirth, but I don't think it's uh, you know, super relevant. Of course, uh, 9 lives, not 9 lives. 9 volt doesn't work that amazing for us with uh with the uh, red candle. But if we ever replace it, should be good. Why did we have invincibility there? Was that missing page that gave us that invincibility? Am I losing my mind? Am I crazy? Am I out of my mind? I, I can't do it. I can't do the voice. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll take Sacrificial Dagger, and then we'll take Abaddon. And I'll punch my microphone. Because something on this computer's got to break if Mr. Green Man's not going to show up. Uh, obviously, our damage now is ridiculous. Our rate of fire is real shitty. But, again, you know... I'm not gonna complain too hard about it because I think this is uh, by all accounts uh, a pretty amazing start to our run here Revenge fly it's just okay, but That's all right. You know what? I feel like we got a magic mush in here. We're gonna try it at least magic mush Close we got Liberty cap. It's not really that close, but it's it's something this is a great run. It continues to get greater. You're bundled up now. Wait till it gets later. But the medium men beg to differ, judging by the hole in the satellite picture. I was really into that song. They have told the story. I mean, everyone's all into All Star now. This is don't please don't take this as me being a hipster. Oh, I was into it before it was cool. All Star was always cool. But uh, I really loved that song when I was younger. And then on my Christmas list, back when people still bought music, um, I said, "Hey, mom." I really want that All-Star song from Smash Mouth. Give me whatever Smash Mouth album has uh, has that on it. And then Christmas comes. I've waited eight weeks to be able to listen to the song in my own leisure. It was a different era. Um, and then I open it up. And it's a Smash Mouth album. It's, it's not Astro Lounge. It's called like Fushio Mong or something like that. And then I... Uh, oh, it doesn't really matter to me as long as it's got All-Star on it. It's not the one with All-Star. It's the one with Walking on the Sun. So instead, I gotta listen to, you know, I've come to appreciate it a little bit more, but I've got to admit that that was a little bit heartbreaking for me. And that's not a really deep album. Like, uh, you know, that's, that's one you really buy for the hits, I think. Uh, the Smash Mouth 
kind of deep cuts weren't as deep as, you know, maybe like a Radiohead album or something like that. But I was also 12, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You gotta have respect, man. You know, people are throwing bread at Steve Harwell when he's singing on stage. That's not cool. He's been through some shit, man. Just because you don't like his music doesn't mean it's okay to throw bread at a man. Just because it's like a little disrespectful. It's not okay to throw bread at people in general in this case. And if you're concocting a situation in your head where you're like, Well, would it be okay to throw bread at somebody if they're starving, Northern Lion? Hey, you're taking this to the absurd uh, extremes and then it's part of the problem, mister. I don't really care about Counterfeit Penny. It's probably like on paper extremely good but it's just not exciting enough liberty cab can occasionally do some cool stuff for us that i appreciate more don't throw bread at steve harwell don't throw bread at anyone man it crosses the line of the joke oh proptosis and probably magic mush too i'm actually glad that i'm not predicting these correctly so that maybe we can put the conspiracy theory that i like implanted this seed into the game somehow uh, a little bit of inappropriate phrasing there on my part but uh we can put that theory to rest, hopefully. This is, uh... I'm, I hope I don't eat these words and end up losing my third run in a row, but... These are... Items that make me think this is a non-losable run. It should be fucking unlosable. Of course, the wild card caveat is that, um... It's also half price at the grocery store this weekend, the wild kid caveat. They've been working on it. It's a new formula. Um... We, uh... We can't really say what's going to happen on this run if we get a reroll room. That then it's up to RNG Jesus, but uh if we don't get a reroll room, this should be super unlosable. Guppy's paw and the nail. We'll take Guppy's paw. Oh, but we're not going to stick with it. We're just going to take it for now. Give us a Guppy item, move on. Break the risk, walk away. Break the risk, walk away. Necropolis 1, making unbelievably good time. And I will fight a mini boss, doesn't bother me in the least. Sucks for you, and... Speed upgrade, actually very useful if I'm gonna be using my orbitals for damage, which uh, I might be doing a little bit of, uh, if you're gonna twist my arm about it. Oh, I don't remember any other songs, I think, from, from that Smash Mouth album, except there's one song that's a, about a guy who's cool in high school but then dies at prom, and it's, just, it's called The Fawns. And he goes, cause you're the Fonz. That, that's my, you know what? I'm actually kind of impressed with that Steve Harwell voice. I don't think it's good, but it's better than I thought it would be just coming out of my mouth. It's kind of like it's got a little frog uh, tones in it. Cause you're the Fonz, something like that. Let's try it. That's the way I like it and I'll never get bored. That's a little deep. That's a little too deep, I should say. The, the lyrics, not necessarily. Um. Some something like that. Somebody. I, I think I could actually, if I if I went hard on it, I could do Steve Harwell's cool guy voice. But still, don't throw bread at him. Jesus Christ. Have some respect. He's a he's a person, just like you and I are people. Cause you're the Fonz. Something like that. And then, um, you know, it was, it's it's a song. I'm actually tempted to go look at the track list, like, as we're recording this, so I think it'll make for some engaging commentary. Don't teleport me, bro! Pretty fly. That's another one. I got stories about Americana. Well, we got two pretty flies, and then was this one in the middle we don't really like? Amnesia? We might as well take it now. We've already taken one. I can't remember if we've been to our shop on this floor. But to be honest with you, I, uh, I can't remember. I sort of don't care, because we're just killing it right now. Another orbital. It's quite selfishly, I would just love to see Holy Mantle, man. And by Holy Mantle, I mean Holy Mantle Howie Mandel. It'd be a great nickname for him if he was a luchador. I was going to say, we got to fight Krampus at some point, you know. Nobody gets out of a, a goat head run without a single Krampus fight. Give me a lump of coal. It's been a little while. That's, I mean, it's completely okay, but down to the next floor. Arcade that we can't really do much with, uh, at least not with the Blood Bank, which is the, the big money rustler down there. Okay. Smash, mouth. I gotta see the track list, I'm sorry. It's flow, I don't remember. Beer goggles, I don't remember. Walking on the sun, easy. Let's rock. No, heave ho. There's the fonts. Pet names. 
Padrino, Nervous in the Alley, Disconnect the Dots, Push, and of course the final song, Why Can't We Be Friends. I do remember that. Probably the definitive version of that song. Um, but you know, I think it sends a pretty timely message in this era of Steve Harwell getting bread thrown at him. How sweet would it have been if instead of getting mad at the bread thrown at him, he just started singing Why Can't We Be Friends. Now, I'm, I'm not saying I would be a big enough man to do that, but I'm saying, you know, when you look back on it in hindsight, that's probably the way to handle it from a PR perspective. People go, man, you know, I'm not a huge Smash Mouth fan necessarily, but the way Steve Harwell handled that was actually pretty cool. That was pretty smooth. No, smooth is Rob Thomas featuring Santana. And I, I refuse to say that it's the other way, because in my world, the singer comes first, Carlos. The singer comes first, or sometimes not at all. Baby. Okay, well, I've embarrassed myself enough for one day. I'm a pretty big fan of this room, as it stands right now. These enemies being trapped in the walls is pretty nice for me. Also nice for me is the ability to have a very good chance to get a teleport card, or at least a pretty good chance. That was bad damage on my part. Are you fucking kidding me? Not only did we get the... Uh, we've already been in there, yeah. Not only did we not get a teleport card, we just got nothing at all. Help. Sneak a shot in. Oh, there we go. You just gotta slowly work him down. One at a time. There we go. Life is but a dream now. Not a teleport card. Can't even blow it up. Shouldn't have used it yet. Blocking my own shots with the red candle's fire. Not feeling very intelligent right now. Uh, we will blow up more skulls back there. We have plenty of time to get a teleport card. It's not like we, you know, we're in a dangerous situation, temporally speaking. I'm taking more damage than I should, I'll admit. We're playing a little recklessly. Except I don't really feel that I'm playing <laughs> recklessly. Uh, I sort of feel like we're... We're just not getting tinted rocks, but that might be my own lack of vision. Um, it's, it's entirely possible. Yara rune spoken, a skull today. Clearly, I remember picking up the rune. Seemed a harmless Pothro rune. <laughs> Ooh, but we unleashed the doubling. I, I'm not gonna continue with my song, which was uh. Pearl Jam's classic, Jeremy, uh, remapped to be about the Yara room. Oh my god, that's bad damage on my part. Uh, but I, I want you to know that I could, and I've, after this episode ends, I'll be, uh, going with it. I, I mean, as, as far as the annals of song parodies go, in the Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, that one's up there. I gotta admit, I always bring up, uh, you know, I'm so thirsty. You already know, 64 ounces daily of life-giving H2O, but, um, probably... Oh, man, my neighbor totally heard that. That's embarrassing. <laughs> my, my favorite of all the, uh, of all the song parodies is still, you know, the, the CIBC, Sweet Child of Mine. CIBC being, the, the, of course, Canadian bank of the same acronym. Huge acronym. Oh, fuck. How do we do <laughs> I'm gonna die on this fucking room. Um, oh, thank you, thank you. I forgot we had this friendly little fly here. Thank you, Gimpy, as well. And that was like, um... They've got rates that seem to me The best ROI on GICs And every day I'm greeted with a smile Smile, smile now and then, when I see their rates, I realize this bank's really great. And if I stay here long, I'll financially be free. Because you gotta get the rhyme in there, and then it goes, whoa, whoa, C-I-B-C. And, uh, yeah. This is the most self-conscious I've ever been in a Rebirth episode. Neighbors probably have their... Uh, their ears pressed to their door like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Where is this supposed to be a nice neighborhood? So we're probably not gonna do boss rush. I'm very disappointed to say it because it looked like it, it was gonna be pretty plausible. But, uh, 
It's not, yeah, it's not in the cards for us, probably. Unless it's just so unbelievable we have to do it. And it's largely because of the fact that I just took a lot of dumb damage on routes. On routes. Indeed. Oh, I did take a hit there, but we got paid out with Gimpy anyway. Let's see what's in our deal with the devil. Wow, man, just Book of Belial? I mean, it's not bad, but it's not what we need. Tech point five, PhD, Bloody Lust. Good, but not quite good enough. This is gonna be trickier than I thought. Fucking past self. This runs unlosable. <laughs> Yuck. Good idea. Well, you know what I should do is probably just fuck off and stop using my orbitals to hit things. But the reason I'm doing it, it's not much to offer my own defense, but the reason I'm doing it is because uh, our rate of fire is fucking trashed here. But that's partly because we've got proptosis. Oh, God. Partly because we've got proptosis, which might not actually be fair now that I think about it, but... Um, I, I should be using my tears instead of my orbitals. It's one of those things where, like, you know, it, it's hard to see your own mistakes sometimes. I'm sure if, if I was watching this back, or if you're watching it right now, you're probably looking at this and seeing a hundred things that I'm doing wrong, but in the moment, I'm, I'm unable to diagnose uh, my own issues. Which is not, uh... It's not wrong, but it's, uh... It's unfortunate right now. Oh my god. At least kill this enemy so you can get into that curse room. No? Okay. Not necessary. I can't believe that I just took damage there. If, now we're at the point where if it wasn't for Gimpy, or if... Yes, does that phrase make sense? If it weren't for Gimpy, we would be in a very, very dangerous situation. Instead, we're fine, but um, we should be better than fine. Thank you for not being bombs. Would have made my life uh, quite a bit harder. I can't believe I have to focus as much. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What is that voice? Why is that voice sticking out of my head? Oh, you know what it is? I almost stepped in the creep there, too. It's the, um... It's the Dark Souls talking nuts that you can drop on the ground to tell people things. I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh, man. I should play that again. In advance of Dark Souls 3. We definitely need to open this. I was hoping for some spirit hearts. Man. Demon baby, why can't you be Dark Bum? Freaking finally here. Take forever with the order. I think, you know, we still... My intention is to save the Yara rune for the chest. It's where you get the best value out of it. If you can make it that far. Which we should be able to. Just my, my own lack of attention to detail has caused us some significant issues here. We'll check that in a sec. Tinted Rock is just... Unbelievable right now. Extraordinarily valuable. Light of my life. That's gonna be good damage. Oh, God. There we go. We're all right. Okay. There is a tinted rock, like I said, so we'll drop that bomb in there. Get a spirit heart. I'm not gonna Yara that, but I'm happy about it. No tinted rock. Ah, crap. <laughs> kind of screwed myself. We should have set up, like, a choke point with a... The bomb, not a bomb, sorry. Uh, the, uh, da, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Red candle. We got another spirit heart out of that tinted rock. So that's, it's good news. It's great news. I'm loving it. And we're back in the situation where we can actually get, like, a, a deal with the devil and, and pay for it. I know, it's a wild thought. So if we get, like, nine lives, that's, uh, pretty great for us. Please don't be a dead end. We've, we've come too far to go back now. Oh, probably should have been hit there, if I'm being honest. Okay, you know, every, uh, every dog has his day, and every rose has its thorn, and we just got thorny right there. I'm gonna check for a second secret room. Ah, I'm gonna be a, the biggest idiot of all time, and not check for a second secret room, because that would make my life way too easy. Now... Just don't fucking eat shit against Skolex. If we can at least force him to jump through the fire, we might be able to do some good damage. Can't believe we didn't get hit there. I can't believe that didn't do any damage. Okay, wait for the... Wait for the, the right moment to strike. That's our moment right there. 
Why does he get so much faster when he's afraid? Like, it doesn't... It seems wrong, somehow. That should be good. Nine lives is pretty much all we can do here. Oh, if we'd just not been so dumb, I could have taken Mom's knife! But instead, we just get growth hormones and we head down and our run is still very much in question. And you know what? This is my own fault. I can't really fault anybody but myself here. Because, you know, I'm the only one playing. <laughs> it's, hopefully that's pretty obvious. Really should not be taking damage on that room. This would be like a super embarrassing one to lose. I should not be taking this much damage. I can't blame it on anything but just shitty play, you know? Just being a little maybe out of focus as we wait for Afterbirth, but... You know, different people respond to the release of a new game in different ways. Cobalt's got like a 205 streak going now. And uh, I'll get like a minus five streak going now because I forgot how to play the game. Okay, a little dangerous. Just in general, when we're doing this much damage, we shouldn't be taking. I was going to say any. Being realistic should say much. We really shouldn't be taking much. We should be taking some, or at least expecting to take some. These are easy for us. Okay, uh, yeah, let's try it. Let's let's try the left hand for as little time as we can have. It could still be useful, if only to give us a chance at spirit hearts. Obviously, there was a tinted rock on that last room. Shouldn't say obviously, because oftentimes I miss those. Uh, and uh, we'll try to uh, blow it up and get some value out of it, because I am keeping myself alive through tinted rocks right now. That was... Probably some of the worst dodging I've ever done, but we still made it work. It's a live bomb. This is not what we want. If I, the only kind of bomb that I like that's live is lightning crashes live from the Rio 1998. Oh my feeling, coming back again like a, like a get fixed rate mortgage. Wrapping me in financial security, center of the earth again. What do you, I'm, I'm trying to make a parody of lightning crashes about a bank. What, bank of Montreal, that it doesn't really work. Anyway. Um, whoa, okay, cool. That's a key. I can't really go into our curse room and feel comfortable, so we either keep going to these rooms hoping to get a bomb, blow up the tinted rock. Or, we just go fight the boss, and give up on it. I, the, the problem is, there is no right answer. There, at least there's no pol policy right answer, you know? There's no standard practice. It's, a, it's based in variance. But you would be assuming, especially with this guy here, that we'd be able to get some bombs. Um, there is also a tinted rock on this very room. On this very room, there is a tinted rock. It's Chip Diggler again. That is uh, a bomb-related item in two spirit hearts. Mr. Boom is not very good for us. The two spirit hearts of incalculable value. I hate to do this, but we have to do this. We're going to take Mr. Boom. And we're going to come down here. And we're going to blow up the tinted rock. And then we're going to walk all the way back. Because I do not want to lose. In contrary, or contrary to what you might be seeing... Uh, in f the terms of my play, I really would prefer not to lose if possible. It's my own idiocy. My subconscious idiocy is impeding my conscious ability to succeed here. Lovely. Just lovely. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I don't really want to uh, go to that curse room. Nor do I want to keep Mr. Boom. Nor do I really want to play either of the judgments. So I don't think we're blowing anything up there. Like, I don't want to get HP from the other Judgment, because I'd prefer to keep permanent Polaroid invincibility. I do think that's advantageous for us right now. If he would give us mapping for sure, I might be interested, but I'd rather just save this bomb for, like, a guaranteed Tinted Rock elsewhere, if we can find one. We've... I think we've done well, and a lot of that was lucky, but we've done well to, um, find ourselves with this much HP at this moment in time. And I oftentimes make that exact same dodge there and just royally shit it up, but that's alright. We're still fine. 
Just remember, we could have had mom's knife right now. <laughs> we could have been set for life. Thank you, my favorite fly. And we're just gonna... Okay, we did find it, and it gave us monkey paw. Monkey's paw is actually really good, but I love the chance for us to become guppy. I gotta go with the guppy chance. I, I resent it, but I gotta go with the guppy chance. Oh, yeah. No question. Okay, it's gonna happen sometimes. We gotta be okay with it. Uh, I'm gonna wait for him to drop... And then maybe shoot or stick around for a minute there. Perfect. Perfect. Great opportunity for us to deal some damage. I was afraid of the fear shot there. Perfect jump. Laser time. Laser time, not necessary. Okay. Still doing fine on HP. I really feel like if we make it to the chest, we're in a great situation. Because of the fact that we're going to get eight items. There's no blank card... Shenanigans. Ooh, shenanigans happening here. But, uh... We should be able to snag... Eight items. If even two of them are good, that gives us a huge leg up. If a couple of them are great, then, you know, even better, obviously. I can't go to the curse room as much as I would love to, and believe you me, I would love to. We can't justify it. Very disappointing there's no Tinted Rock there. That's oftentimes where I find Tinted Rocks. But, uh, you know, you don't get to choose where they show up. You just get to choose whether or not you see them. Well, there's a great dodge around that fire. I'm actually very impressed. These are, like, the ideal room for us right now. Beautiful. Okay, Red Hearts. Dark Bomb would have been a huge asset on this. When is it not? But it would have been a huge asset here. Yeah, okay. I, I waste one of my many uh, innumerable bombs here. I'm making a joke. I don't have very many bombs. Uh, and then this guy just flies right out of the center where I used the bomb to get to in the first place. I see how it is. Real, real cool. Should we have taken damage there? Probably. That was bad. That was bad damage on my part. That's all right. We still got three spirit hearts. Master of unlocking. You have to open red chests. Like, when you're at this low HP, one spirit heart could be easily the difference between life and death. So, um, we have the option to take master of unlocking. Well, let's be honest. We're not going to be taking uh, left hand to the end of the game. Because we, we want actual items. Although I'm so tempted to Yara the red chest on the chest and get eight red chests. What do you think our odds would be of becoming Guppy? We need two Guppy items. Probably like one in one in 16 odds or something like that. Something that factors to four easily. Um, but uh, either way, we should probably take Master of Unlocking. We don't need it. We have enough keys, but it's a convenient excuse to remember to not take uh, the left hand any further. Unfortunately, I wish the left hand had done better for us, but it's not like we had a huge oppor opportunity cost associated with taking it. Life goes on. Hopefully. <laughs> not always, but, uh, but hopefully. Great. Opportunities to pick up some extra bombs here, which is why I, I would, you know, a lot of the time I would probably look at this room as an opportunity to spend bombs so we could get the fuck out of here and not have to attack these guys, but... Instead, I'm going to take every opportunity to actually fight so that we can uh, pick up some more bombs, maybe for use on the chest. You never know, maybe we get a sad bomb or something. You know, sad bombs, polyphemus, or actually sad bombs, proptosis was what I meant to say there. Um, could be excellent for us. Watch out for the creep. Still assuming this is the right way. wonder if there's a way we can bomb our way into that curse room. It seems so unlikely. We gotta check, right? Like, it could technically be here. Now I think it cannot. Hopefully we did do some damage with that bomb, at least. Because other than that, it's not going to do much, too much for us in terms of value. I mean, at this point, I can't imagine needing keys any less, but... It's alright. Very surprised, I gotta say, by the fact that we have no... Um, no tinted rocks on this whole floor. It strikes me as extremely unlikely. I extinguished my own fire there. 
Or as Fox would say, you just shot your own mustard. I don't think he's the original, the progenitor of that phrase, if you want to be technical. I believe he stole it from The Simpsons, but uh, either way, he does like to say it. Okay, death is dead. More bombs. The great thing, oh, okay, clear some space. That was dangerous. The great thing about Isaac is that he's very predictable, with the exception of the beams of light. So, you know, you can look at our run and, and pretty much... Eh, it's okay. Pretty much extrapolate how much damage we're likely to take, or at least a, a logical range of damage that we could take from, from Isaac. And, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm like, we got a pretty good setup. I don't think we're going to take more than two hits against Isaac. I think there's a decent chance we take zero, which is really where I'd like to be uh, to, to feel confident in this one. I'm very surprised that it took me that long to take damage on this room. I'm also very surprised and very happy that uh, Gimpy made it uh, not a, a big deal to take that damage in the first place. So, did use a bomb there. I will use a bomb here as well. A black heart or a spirit heart could be extremely valuable. We got a black heart. Very, very useful. Isaac fight. I don't know. I, I thought I had Tammy's head there. I walked up and was like, drive by Tammy's head. Obviously, that didn't work out quite the way I wanted it to, but it's okay. Uh, also, if we get hit, we got to get in there ASAP. We've got great uh, abilities to deal some extra damage during that invincibility, thanks to our orbitals. But the invincibility pales in comparison to our absolute level of HP right now. If I could just avoid getting hits, which I can't. <laughs> but at least we tried. We still got three HP left. And now we've got the attack fly helping us out, or the, the uh, revenge fly helping us out. I think we've done a pretty good job of, of staving off uh, Oblivion here. Now just don't forget to use the Yara rune right away. I've, I've probably been making incalculable numbers of mistakes that I haven't even recognized. That would be one that I would notice right off the bat and would be pretty extremely disappointed by. So let's just knock ourselves into here. Curse of the Blind. That's going to be fun. Two items. First two. Strange Attractor. That's real bad. Bobby Bob Bomb. Bobby Bomb. It's okay. Dio. Not any good at all. The Soul. Pretty good for the Spirit Hearts plus the, the actual effect. The Relic. Very good. Daddy Long Legs. Extremely good. Bob's Brain. Just terrible. Scapular might save us. That was just a, a very interesting assortment of items. Um, we got... Bob's Brain and Strange Attractor. I do not want those items right now. Things are too much in flux. But we also got the Relic, Scapular, uh, and Daddy Long Legs. Those are great. And then the Soul. I mean, I think it was a net gain for us. The D10 is like, I mean, it's bad, but it's not like we don't do anything with it. So it's not like it costs us anything. But, um, man, that is, a, that is a very strange setup of items. I still have no idea where we sit, but I will say... We're better off as a result of these items than we were coming in. Except for the fact that Strange Attractor is a, the fucking biggest wild card in the whole game. And to be honest with you, I, I actually kind of believe that. I, I would... I would... Out of all the items that are kind of dubious, and the reason I'm, I'm stumbling over my words here is because I want to make sure that in, I'm, I'm not making a mistake. I want to make sure it's in no uncertain terms. Um, if I had to reroll into items... I would rather reroll into Soy Milk than reroll into Strange Attractor, probably. Depending on the run. There, there can be changes to that. Um, but I would rather, if I'm being honest, probably reroll into either of those than, than reroll into uh, Isaac's Heart. So, I guess I was being a little bit disingenuous. That is bad damage. You know what? I don't, I don't resent you, Gimpy, for not helping me out there, but man, that would have been nice. It's been pretty good to me. I, I can't be salty over it. I can be, but I shouldn't be. We're basically done here. Man, Daddy Long Legs... Daddy Long Legs uh, was so clutch, but... I'm still a little skeptical if, if we have the... If we have the ability here to make this one work. We found our secret room uh, pretty much just through a side effect of a, an offensive bomb there. Got a Spirit Heart. Thank you, Relic. And actually, this is going to be awesome for mapping purposes try to sneak in a shot or Danny Longlegs can finish the job. Hmm. Well, this is a definitely a situation where we want to get the 
candle out as soon as possible. Help. Oh, we didn't get hit. That's good damage. Relatively safe. The, more, the longer we go here, the more I'm getting pretty convinced we're actually going to make it. Which maybe shouldn't be that much of a surprise, considering we've got, like, Proptosis and, you know, several other things that I could say whatnot about. But, uh... It's, it's been a little bit of a crapshoot, man. Uh, we got lucky we imparted fear right there. Otherwise, we would have been probably hit again. Another key is, like, super unnecessary at this point. Might be due for... Ah, uh, that was dumb of me. We got a Gimpy pickup, though, and I think we might get a Relic charge here as well. No, next room. That's okay. Oh, it's a dead end. It's so disappointing. It's one of those rooms, or one of those runs, I should say, where, you know, every extra room we have to go to does lower our chances of winning by maybe like 2%. I mean, 2% is nothing to get bent out of shape about until you get it 10 times in a row. You know, oh, the soul just turned that away. Deflecting palm. Ares, it's okay? It's okay, considering that we have... Um, we don't even need to do this room, but I had a hunch and it worked out nicely. Um, but uh, I forget what I was saying. Considering we're going to be running into enemies when we have permanent Polaroid invincibility, it's actually maybe pretty useful. Alright, that was a really nice kind of like one, two, three punch we had going on there. Bob's brain did damage. Red Candle did damage. Daddy Long Legs did damage. Oh, that, that's, you know, what are we going to do? <laughs> With uh, Strange Attractor working like that, it's going to be tough for us to not get hit. Halo of Flies. Uh, I think we already had full orbitals, but... You know, anything that's not explicitly terrible for us is enough for me to not get bent out of shape about, I think. I think we have to just go right here. As much as I would love to try to skip the big rooms, I, I don't think it's realistic to think that we're not going to have to do at least one of these to get through to the end. So hopefully we just pick the right one. And to be honest with you, this is a pretty easy, um, this is a pretty easy big room as far as the chest is concerned. I can't believe I dodged that, to be honest with you. I feel like I'm playing okay on the chest. I have taken some damage, but you know you have to also note how unpredictable some of these enemies can be. That's our second secret room. That's very encouraging. You have to note uh, how unpredictable some of these enemies can be with our um, with our strange attractor running buck wild here. Not quite done. Done. Spirit heart from the relic. Second secret room is red hearts, but at the very least encouraging because we know our boss room is probably here. And there we are. We will win this run. CNN is predicting a Northern Lion victory. Um... I wouldn't say against all odds, but it got it ended up being a little bit of a scrape. I don't even think we want. Wow, smart idea. Um, we don't even want a health upgrade right now. The exception is if we get uh, some of the flies from uh, Blue Baby. If they drop uh, half red hearts, which I think might be able to happen thanks to Gimpy, um, we might want to give it a shot. But we don't want an empty red heart. At least it, it doesn't help. I don't think it hurts either, but it certainly doesn't help. But we... Oh, my God. He's, again, very unpredictable. Maybe we just want to use Red Candle in Bob's brain? Oh, that was bad, but now invincibility means we've won. Okay. Well, he's damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.